everyone, it's Esther. I've had some nice conversations with some fellow orchid lovers who were saying to me that they have a Phalaenopsis orchid that has a few aerial roots and hardly any roots in the pot. And I was thinking, you know, I have one really similar at home. So today's my day off work and I decided to sort out what's wrong with my cute little fell. It had started having really beautiful flowers and I thought all was going well until I discovered that the flowers also had bugs all over them. So in one of my other videos we had a look at the flowers and we discovered that they were dying because they had bugs on them. So I sprayed the flowers with hydrogen peroxide 3% which is my trusty friend for bugs. So I have this here, I buy it in the pot from the chemist. That's a 6% solution, so I water that down 50-50 into my little spray bottle and I use that for spraying. So I can't see any more visible bugs, but her roots are definitely not happy. Some of them I want to keep because there really is a minimum of roots in the pot. And these two aerial roots are probably what's helping keep her alive. So if you get aerial roots... Don't ever chop them off. They're really going to help your plant. It's epiphytic, which means it likes to grow on a tree or in the air. So some of these roots are totally thin, totally rotted. And last year I hadn't repotted her when I brought it home from the shop. So I've got my trusty Dremel out. And this time I've cleaned the pot. I'm going to put it back in the same pot. And I've made plenty of air holes in the pot. So I am going to go into the bathroom, I'm still going to spray most of this with hydrogen peroxide and then I'm going to cut off the bits that I don't want with my snips that are sitting here in the isopropyl alcohol. Now I have another video on how to repot this and how to get rid of the dirty stuff so I'll leave you to look back at that video for this one. I'll shorten this one by just showing you what's going to go back in the pot and how I'm going to do it. So I'll go and spray it and I will be back. So I've made an executive decision seeing how uh, this plant did actually have bugs down every single one of its little crevices. But that got a really good spray throughout the whole plant. And then I've decided to chop off everything that looked rotten, horrible, and this is basically what I've left myself with for the pot. Now I did decide to cut both the flower stems back to where they have the possibility of another growth coming. Because this really didn't get a good flowering part of its season at all. So we will see how it goes. If the roots die even more I will probably decide to chop both of the flower stalks off and just concentrate on the plant. So that one will soon be going back in a pot. So I've now rinsed off my plant, <coughs> given it a good wash down all the crevices I possibly can. I'm now just going to try and dry off the majority of the dampness. may not perfect it just yet. So this is all I have left to put in the pot. And I am going to repot it for the simple fact that it does actually have two roots that are used to being in a pot. I'm going to make sure the other roots stay out of the pot. So we shall go ahead. Now I've put a little bit of sphagnum on the bottom of the moss, or the bottom of the pot, because that's how I usually like to do it. And I'm going to try and fold those roots back in in an approximate way that they would have come out. The last time she was dreadfully hanging over the edge of a pot, so I'm actually going to try and centre it a little bit better. I'm also going to put in a fresh steak. And use that to try and help hold her up. I want that not too low down in the pot and I've now got some of the littler pieces of bark that come out of my garden bark. It's pine bark from Tui. It's just generally garden bark. So those bits are just going to get around those roots just to give it some opportunity to hold it up with the bark as well. And I'm making sure that the two aerial roots stay out of the pot. It's not an easy task. 
Now, and with this, I want some layers of sphagnum, so I'm also going to try and put those around the pot. Spread them around between those two roots, and then do some bits of sphagnum. some bark some sphagnum now if I had just the aerial roots I would chop off everything else that had gone rotten and I would probably put a saucer shaped dish down with some sphagnum moss on it keep it lightly moist keep the aerial roots misted and then just see if it will start growing some roots down into the sphagnum moss on the saucer but because I have these plant roots I'm trying not to break they're going back into a pot okay I'm not trying to stuff anything in there too hard I'm simply trying to spread it around throughout the pot the sphagnum moss will help with the humidity and keeping the plant moist but not super wet some of these bark chips are very very tiny little bark chips some of them are big enough to give aeration as well if you had perlite perlite would be another thing you could pop in with this these bark chips are just simply bark chips and nothing else So I don't want to bury the crown of the plant there, sorry, the, the stem. But just to help keep those aerial roots hydrated, I'm going to put some more sphagnum moss. Because they've always had sphagnum moss under them, as you'll see in my previous videos. Actually going to use that stake as well to hold it on the other side. Right, any roots I can break down there. Then I might even tie those two stakes together just to keep it upright. So just a few more chips there to help hold it in place. And then I'll give it a bit of a watering after a day. I won't water it today, I'll let those roots dry out. There is a new section of a root trying to come through there, so let's see if that will do anything for me. I'm just using the bits of bark to hold it up. Yep, I'm definitely going to get something there to tie that together. And that's it. So we will put that up on the windowsill now where it's nice and warm and sunny so that if there's any other moisture down within the leaves that we can help dry that out pretty quickly because otherwise that could cause the stem to rot. And that's how she's going to stay for a while. Nothing's packed in. She's got some moss there to help with those aerial roots and they've had a bit of a watering as we've done things today. So that is about how it's going to go. And we'll see where we go from there. So if you liked my video, give it the thumbs up. If you didn't like my video, give it the thumbs down. If you'd like to subscribe, hit the red subscribe button or the little flower that's on the bottom left right hand corner of my videos. Thank you for watching today.